It's like, not so great after that. I feel awful miserable, but also refreshed. I finally crossed the line. I knew it would come crashing down like this sooner or later. Having become unable, unable to feel anything but disgust for other people, there was no way I could hope to maintain the relationship I had before the accident. This music, man, it's quite intense, isn't it? Knowing that kind of... I don't know. It's very metallic sounding. Today's incident will definitely get back to Koji and Omi, and everyone will be convinced I've had a major change of character. Honestly, I don't care anymore. At least I probably won't be committed to this. I just need to avoid acting any stranger than I already have. Yeah, good luck with that. This puts a rift between me and the others good. The affordable stress I'd avoid brings a smile to my lips. I'm fed up with them sticking their nose into my life. It's like they don't care that they make my guts turn just by being near me. Well, if you could, you know, tell them about how you feel, but then you'd be committed, wouldn't you? So, you don't want that. Selfish asshole. I mean, you sympathize with, with him, but at the same time, you just like call him out for being such a prick. I've been terrified of them until now, but today I struck fear into one of them. In that sense, it's something of a relief. I'm not entirely without remorse for what happened. Okay, so you still... You still have some of that, I guess. The person I just demolished with a verbal equivalent of a nuclear bomb used to be my friend Yo. Even though my senses don't believe it, my mind saps the fury. Not having any particular grudge against Yo herself, and I didn't want to hurt her. In that respect, perhaps I should have just ignored her outright. Yo was an attractive girl, I simply didn't think bad of her. To be honest, though, I was not even Koji and Omi tried to stick together. Felt like they were using us as entertainment. And Yo seemed totally oblivious to the fact that she was dancing to their tune. The cluelessness was irritating. Still, I knew that none of them meant any harm. Back then, I didn't have any reason to hurt, so it was just to get my way. If having a casual relationship with Yo would keep our circle of friends together, I was willing to make that compromise. Now, however, there's no room in my heart for such forbearance. Merely talking to someone who's an ordeal, then how can I be expected to show them kindness? These ruminations have left me exhausted. I want to return to Sire as soon as possible. But thinking about the packed trains and crowded downtown streets between her here and some saps my spirit. Got inside of a nearby bench, I sit down and close my eyes to the horrors of the world. I can't do anything about the stink or the noise, but at least I can calm my sense enough to rest. You know, you'd think in his condition, the ideal thing would be like, try to blind yourself so you can't see the horrors of the world. And try to screw up your nose so bad you can't smell how bad the world is. Can you imagine me in that kind of state? You'd be like, ah, I've got to tear up my goddamn eyes, fuck this shit. But then, I mean, if you did that, you'd definitely be committed because they'd be like, he's lost his mind. He tore out his own eyes. And then he'd be kind of, well, I mean, even if you couldn't see all that, you know, it would still be horrifying because. I don't know, man. His situation is just fucked. When I regained consciousness in the T University Hospital world, she, the world was as dark as it is now. Is this a flashback? I had not re had recovered my sight, even though my eyes and optical nerves were undamaged. Well, it's quite unfortunate you regained your sight, no offense, but uh, it would have been better if you didn't, because my god. It would be better than those horrible hallucinations he has. It must have been an after-effect of the accident. Blindness was a shock, but now I know that my suffering then was nothing, for all my sense of hearing, touch, taste, and smell were all fine at the time. The real horror began when my sight returned. The one small mercy was that I was able to come to terms with the accident and my neurosurgery while still blind. I panicked when I first saw the nightmarish hospital and the blood-curdling shapes of the doctors and nurses, but I soon guessed the cause. It chills me to think of what might have happened if I had recovered my sight along with my consciousness, suddenly awakening in what can only be described as hell. I would have no doubt lost my mind instantly. Soon my disorder began to spread to the senses of touch, taste and smell. As it turns out, sight exerts tremendous influence over the other four. How'd that work? The taste of my food, the feel of my bed sheets, the fragrance of my get-well flowers all became as unbearably foul as my eyes said they should be. 
I mean, maybe that's again coming up with the disclaimers like, okay, this is not like some of this is fictional medically wise, so you know, don't be like, oh yeah, this is a legit thing. Eventually, when even the doctor's voices became unrecognizable as human, I decided to kill myself. I didn't believe for a second that I could live in this new world. At least not until I met Sire. So, if he hadn't met her, he would have probably just offed himself. Which, I mean, given the situation, we can't really blame him on that. That is like, he's just fucked. One night while thinking of a painless way to die, I found myself scumming to sleep. Drifting between the nightmares in my dreams and the nightmare reality, I didn't notice her enter my room. I can imagine that! You're awake, the world is a nightmare. You sleep, the world is still a nightmare. It's just a nightmare. Constantly, you get no rest. The next thing I knew, there was a face staring down at me from next to my bed. The face was not covered in pus or slime or earthworm-like feelers. It had smooth white cheeks, round eyes, a lovely little nose. All things I had never expected to see again. The face was that of a girl, undeniably human and positively glowing with beauty. I sighed in admiration, savoring the first glance, but peace, I mean, and joy since regaining my sight. She had not expected such a reaction, apparently. She asked, looking at the clock, I saw that it was exactly three in the morning. No time for a young girl to be alone in the hospital. Perhaps she expected me to mistake her for a ghost. I mean, you know, like, like I, I keep saying a number of times now. It's like I know how the story ends and plot twists. At the same time, I was just like... Hmm... I just... Who are you? Just... I mean, did she just casually walk into the ward that he was in, or what? But I would not have cared if she had been a ghost. Either way, she was a godsend. I mean, her reaction alone is kind of interesting, wasn't it? I assume that she was the daughter of a late shift doctor or another patient. It's unusual, but not unthinkable for such a girl to be wandering around the hospital. Interesting. I cried desperately to keep her from leaving. It was only after she turned around that I realized I hadn't thought of what to say next. Her beautiful eyes drew me in, healing my soul to its core. A little white haze clad in my mind, I struggled to form a coherent sentence. No longer concerned with, uh, Variety, I let the words come as they will. That is a strange thing to ask. So I looked confused at first, but then she smiled like she just found a new toy. Smile is brighter than my memories of the sun. She said, holding on her slender white hand. Ever so carefully, as though catching snowflakes, I placed my palm against hers. I could feel her human warmth and the softness of her delicate fingers. She was there, just beyond the palm of my hand. Thinking back on the joyful tears I shed then, I know that this is the moment I was saved from my fate. I mean, as messed up as it seems to say, but honestly, it would be better off if he just, like, you know, uh, did, you know, uh, you know, off himself. As messed up as that sounds, because, I mean, Look at the alternative. This is his world here. This is how he will look at the world for the rest of his life, unless they somehow miraculously are able to cure him of whatever has caused him to see the world like this. Huh? <laughs> Hmm. As an effect of the surgery. Maybe it was the surgery that caused it and not the accident. Mm -hmm. They did say it was experimental. 
思議な人あなたって面白い She said, winding up with this. また来ていい Gently around my way. ああ、そりゃもう。いいのかい大丈夫よ。夜、right. は私のものだから。The night belongs to me. I am the night. I must click this again. ああ、そりゃもう。いいのかい君はそんなことをした。ラララ And so our rendezvous began. Weird word rendezvous, isn't it? I mean, look how it's spelt. It's, it's, is rendezvous a French word?、Uh, it's just weird how they like, kind of borrow words from other languages like that. So I came to my room every night at 3 a.m., skillfully taking advantage of the duty nurse's shift change. I was astonished to learn that she was living inside the hospital. She said, answering my surprise with a nonchalant smile. She had been living in the suburbs with her father, she told me, until one day he'd suddenly stopped coming home. As she had tried, died of waiting, So I decided one night to sneak into the hospital where he'd worked. And there she'd lived for over two months, searching for his whereabouts all the while. I didn't have to go to school. I d i She was a strange girl. On the one hand, she looked and acted like a child. On the other, she was remarkably self reliant, and at times. He exhibited a sharp intelligence and deep knowledge that many may have found unsettling. I didn't care, so I was the only other human in the world gone mad. Resistance meant far more to me than the standard of society. Now, it's not my world that's gone mad, it's you, sir. You have gone mad. Granted, it's not his fault or anything, it's just that he now looks at the world through horrifying hallucinations. 全然平気ここにいれば食べるものにも不自由しないしパパのうちに一人ぼっちでいるよりもずっと楽しいよ入院してる患者さんたちのうちちょっと精神的に参ってそうな人を事前にチェックしといてね時々部屋に真夜中に忍び込んで脅かしたりするなその人が大騒ぎしてもそういう患者さんの言うことはみんな真に受けたりしないから。Sire, you're kind of a dick. 結局は悪い夢ってことで片付けられちゃうし。Her confession reminded me that the hospital is famous for its ghost stories. Who could have imagined that there was actually a real girl impishly roaming these hallways? じゃあ、僕も最初はそのつもりだ。うん、ごめんね。So she merely came to mess with him at first and be like, ha 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 ha. And then he's like, oh wait. Okay, okay, let's, you know, let's get to know each other, let's chat. While her pranks were hardly praiseworthy, I couldn't bring myself the scolder for the very thing that had brought us together. <laughs> you say, oh, yes, I've got my、uh, covers on my bed here. Yeah, it looks like, you know, a you know,、like、mass of flesh and stuff. It makes it look like his, all his guts are popping out, but that's not his guts. That's just, that's just his duvet cover, man. <laughs> With extreme care, I was able to conceal my sensory disorder. It was glaringly obvious that the doctors had no way to cure me, and the fact that I had undergone a still experimental procedure made me even more cautious. As a medical student, it was easy for me to imagine how the doctors would react if they discovered that I was exhibiting such unusual side effects. It's not about to become a guinea pig, a mere specimen to be examined with clinical attachments. That、uh, detachments. You know, it's like. Part of me is like, you know what? Why not just tell them, man? It's like, cause like, you know, on it, there's a potential it could get better, but at the same time, it could get worse. 
But really, how could it get worse than perceiving the world like this? How could it get any worse? And so I hid my discomfort and loathing behind a mask of normality, convincing the doctors that any signs of stress from merely result to hospitalization. So I was my support, looking forward to her nightly visits gave me the strength to endure my daily torture. Hope can make an enormous difference in a patient's progress. With the aid of my secret nurse, I recovered at a pace that left a doctor stunned. On the last night before my release, I summoned my courage and asked her, in other words, there was nothing keeping her here. There. I asked timidly, the question took all the courage I had. え?家族はもういないから。部屋はいくらでも余ってる。人目を忍ぶような必要もないし、住み心地もそんなに悪くないんじゃないかと。I was too afraid to ask her what she thought of that, so I hastily offered it to you. So I said, looking a little embarrassed. だから警察とかは困るの。なるべくこっそりと探さなきゃいけないし。頑張るよ。どんなことだってやる。僕は。I will control myself if I only spoke the truth. さやと、離れたくないんだ。Weird. At first she looked bewildered, but after a few moments of silence she said, "少しだけ." <laughs> they not, that facial expression, that would, I mean, that seems like, uh, you know, a proper kind of uh, reaction to what he just asked. He's like, are you serious? You do realize what you just said, right? <laughs> that night she left my room earlier than usual. On the day of my release, I managed to smile as I accepted the hideous, foul-smelling saliva. <laughs> Uh, the flesh beasts calling themselves Koji, Omi, and Yo came to pick me up. Though they had come to see me many times during my stay, it never got easier to see my friends change so horribly. You know what? Can you imagine, like, an anime adaption of this? I mean, maybe one exists. I don't know. I just, like, I just would love to see the visual image of its friends driving him back home. From his perspective, just these massive blobs in the car. One driving, and the car looks horrifying. He's very like, Sometimes you must want to do home life. How do you feel less than the last telegram? It's like, uh, I don't know how to respond to that, sir. My sudden tears of despair drew suspicion, but I managed to explain them away as tears of joy. Yes, tears of horrifying joy. <laughs> oh, fuck. So, when you know, wait, um, I'm playing with it. I've come to see me many times here in my say I'd never got it easier to see my friends change so hard. While we walked to Coach's car, I looked desperately for Sai amid the grotesque scenery. Even as we drove away, I kept watching the hospital fade in distance, praying for a last glimmer of hope. But Sai never appeared. After Koji and the others dropped me off, I paused a while to regard my surroundings. I had lived my entire life on this mark, in this house, there were no other places I could call on. But nothing was as I remembered. As I walked up the path to the front door and took in the yard where I had spent my childhood, I could feel those memories of being defiled by twisted, festering shapes around me. You know, doors have keys, you know. Well, need keys. Well, you know, a front door certainly works. Does the key also look like a fleshy mass? He goes up the door. Freaking hell, where's the keyhole on this thing? 
Inside the house of our nothing familiar, nothing to offer me comfort and warmth, what I had once called home was now a whole other world. Did I read that previous line? Yeah, being well, like a shapes around me. I whispered with a smile of self pity, there was one last stop to make, one last nail to hammer into my coffin. I stepped into the room that had cradled me from childhood. The walls were papered with human entrails. The bed, a tangled mess of worm flesh. I mean, why specifically entrails and shit? Well, I mean, what's up with that? But none of that mattered. There, curled up on the bed like an abandoned cat, was I. Wait, that's a bed? You sleep in entrails now, apparently. As I stood there in shock, she looked up at me and in a tiny, weak voice said, I responded by sweeping her into my arms, embracing her tightly so that she would not escape. Well, this just sounds all kinds of wrong, if you ask me. <laughs> Saya did not resist. Wonder if that would have led him to one of those scenes. I mean, it did say that uh, one of the themes has a bit of sexual violence, but I don't think we're going to be seeing that in this, you know, uh, version that has those scenes take, taken out. Not censored, just outright taken out. When she arrives at the Saga Saga house, Army first takes a deep breath to calm herself as I finally wrap up this recording. Um, this quick save option, but where's the regular save option? Oh, there. Save file number one. Pretty. Wait, no, not 120 save slots? Why would you need that many? Holy crap! Let's return to tile screen. I wanna have a look at the CG stuff. Where is it? CG library? Okay, so we've nearly got the entire first page there. Two, three, four. Yeah, this does seem like it is probably going to be pretty short. I don't know how short, though. That's the face of a man who's done with life. That's the face of a flesh that's done with life. <laughs> that's the face of flesh that's done with life, too. As is that one. Yep. Yeah. Any viewers read any, you know, actual H.P. Lovecraft? It's like his writing style is quite hit and miss for me, personally. Feels like he tells stories in a way where it's just a very long, drawn-out description. Like, in this eldritch abomination, this mass of flesh and whatnot and fuck. I can't even describe it the way he would describe it, but, you know, it's just really long, drawn-out descriptions. But, you know, some of his ones actually tell stories, you know, rather than just be, like, overly descriptive, and it doesn't really feel like it's a story to it, it's just describing something horrifying. It's like a favourite of mine was, I forget what it's called, and it seemed like it was more probably the other writer than H.P. Lovecraft himself, because they kind of co-written it. I can't remember the title of it, but the plot resolves around a trip to Venus, and like uh, this one guy that's there, they're there to collect stuff from Venus, because Venus, very different time actually is, because I guess this was a point in time before we realized that Venus was a complete hell of the planets. So, he's there, and then he ends up trapped in a maze that's invisible, and it's it's pretty interesting, it's kind of nicely paced. Another one I like is, I can't remember the name of it, but it has this kind of violinist that the protagonist encounters and he's like kind of really secretive he's like no no i can't let you hear me play please never speak of this again and then when it finally gets confronted it's like because it's really mysterious it's like why is he so secretive about it it's like unusual unearthly playing and it's like that's like nothing i've ever heard before and then like eventually it's like okay i'll let you sit in while i do these nightly kind of playings and it's just like, holy shit, does it escalate then? <laughs> it's pretty good. Wish I could remember the name of it. They're like, ha 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 ha, we're still normal. 
as are we, but he is not. And by he, I don't mean him. Oh, it kind of reminds me of that doctor from uh, Dark Harbor 2. Simply because I'm pretty sure they're both doctors. Or maybe she was more scientist, I don't know. But it's the green hair and glasses. That's about it. That probably led into one of those scenes, I'd imagine. Gotta feel bad for yo. That guy looks like he's barely paid any attention. He's probably not paying attention to whatever the hell is going on. Wait. Wait, what? <laughs> what is up with the shirt there? What's going on there? It's like it's been ripped. Didn't notice that. It's like, you've completely gone insane there for being or whatever. I forgot your name already. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> he looks so done, doesn't he? He's like, ah. Oh, fuck this bed of flesh. Weird story. Weird story so far. Honestly, when it kind of warned about the gore and kind of gave options, I thought it was going to be worse than this. I mean, this is pretty bleh. What was it? I was expecting it to be like way more just like, you know, oh no, than that. Sure, this is like horrifying stuff. It's like, but to me, it just seems like a more fleshy version of Silent Hill or something. It's gory, sure, but it could be worse. So I'll do for this record session. I hope you enjoyed this Let's Play so far. Don't know how long it's going to be, because I've been told it's relatively short, but I don't know what that actually means. How short are we looking here? Like, would it be like just 20 parts or less? Or would it be up to 40 parts or less? I don't know. Probably wouldn't be like a hundred parts though, because that would kind of contradict it being short, wouldn't it? But yeah, I hope you enjoy this Let's Play. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.